Before the video starts, a public service announcement. This car's name is pronounced Porsche Taycan. All right, Taycan, not taken. That's a Liam Neeson movie. Subscribe, okay? Sound. It's a big part of the performance car experience, the little that the all-electric Porsche Taycan 4S makes gives silence a menacing reputation. Push the throttle pedal and it's like an instant hurricane kick behind a competition sailboat. It's like a speed rheostat. You just think how fast you want to go and you're there. Thrust without engine growl actively brings the ears into the driving process. They hear what the tires and chassis are doing. There are new sonic cues. It's a revelation. I have profiled a Taycan before, a turbo model that I drove on the Angeles Crest Highway outside of Los Angeles. It's an amazing car on an amazing road. I had an amazing time, but uh, the price tag? Uh, it's amazing. The turbo starts at about $153,000 and it's easy to option it up to 175k. The 4S is the affordable Taycan, starting at almost $50,000 less, but at 105 grand to begin with, not exactly targeting the Nissan Leaf crowd. That price is with the base 79.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. The car that I'm driving has the $6,850 performance battery plus package. That ups it to 93.4 kilowatt hours. The cells are not turned on by software. There are actually more physical modules. The bigger pack adds more range and oomph, upping horsepower by 40 and torque by 30 pound feet. It also adds weight. Other options on this car include a $4,100 Racetex synthetic interior. This 3D fabric is partly made from recycled fishnets. The $7,200 premium package adds vented seats, the big glass roof, and a Bose sound system. In Dolomite Silver, my nicely but hardly fully optioned tester is bumping up close to $130,000. That's $21,000 more than a fully loaded Tesla Model S, which is quicker with more range. Let's go over the drivetrain quickly. The lithium-ion pouch pack cells are mounted in the floor, naturally. They're liquid-cooled. Like Turbo and Turbo S, this one is all-wheel drive with two liquid-cooled motors, though the rear unit is smaller on the 4S. They use a unique hairpin wind that boosts the copper fill from 45 to 70 percent. It means the motors can be cooled faster for better performance. This is the start button, though you really don't need it because when you sit down in the car with the proximity key, uh, it senses that you're here and automatically turns everything on for you. How thoughtful. Like the more expensive models, 4S has a two-speed transmission on the rear axle, and kudos to Porsche for the excellent selector, which feels great. No paddles, no need for them. A three-chamber adaptive air suspension with electronic damper control is standard. Brakes have six pistons up front, four in the back with steel rotors. Porsche's tungsten surface-coated brakes and carbon ceramic discs are available at a significant upcharge. The slick motorized charge port doors found on turbo models are optional on 4S. With level two home charging, an 80% charge happens in about nine and a half hours. A second port that's always on the passenger side in the car's respective market is for high-speed charging. I'll cover the unique 800 volt charging system later. Even with the bigger battery that comes with extra horsepower, the 4S is not the fastest EV out there. Porsche claims a 3.8 second zero to 60 time, and they tend to be conservative. This thing feels awesome off the line. That's what electric torque does. Bam, instant power right off the line. 4S may not beat a Model S in ludicrous mode, but the Taycan can be slammed hard all day long without going into a protection setting. In sport mode, the single shift of the transmission can be felt, something that Porsche says it could have engineered out, but left it in for an analog dynamic. 
FYI, packing an extra 177 pounds, the performance battery package doesn't alter the acceleration. The 0 to 60 time applies to both versions of the 4S. So does the top speed of 155 miles an hour. I've not driven the new Tesla Model Y, but I've driven a lot of EVs and gotta say, the Taycan has this very unique velvety feel to it overall. It feels very, very expensive. <laughs> That's because it is. Only buyers can say if the Taycan's price is worth it. Uh, no doubt the build quality is faultless. That's expected from the brand. And it's a gorgeous car in person. Personally, I like my information front and center rather than off to the side, better to keep eyes on the road, and engaging the driver is what this car does best. The Taycan is flawless in the corners. You just look at where you want to go, and you're there. It's, it's really remarkable. All-wheel drive and those heavy batteries in the floor that lower the center of gravity are a good start. Some cars plug directly into your synapses and become part of you. This is some car. A $6,400 performance package that's not on my tester would add rear axle steering and Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus, among other tech. But ask yourself if that's needed, uh, maybe for the track? Even on wet roads, pushing the 4S hard is a joy. This is a Porsche, so the suspension is going to be a little bit on the firm side, but that said, it's remarkably comfortable for that dynamic. Um, you hit a bump, one and done, really composed. And with an extremely low 0.22 coefficient of drag, there's very little wind noise. I couldn't get a good shot of the rear active spoiler in the rain. Taycan has standard automatic emergency braking. Adaptive cruise and other electronic safety tech is optional. Porsche doesn't offer anything like autopilot or super cruise if that's a deal breaker for you. Like any electric vehicle, Taycan sends juice to the battery during coasting and braking. One thing about the braking dynamic of the Taycan, it feels like a regular internal combustion car. There is no one pedal driving dynamic to it. Porsche claims it sort of messes up the performance drivability of the vehicle, and you know, that's what they're all about. Kind of a surprise though that they didn't offer it as a setting that a user could go into. Using the brake pedal, some 90% of the stopping power comes from regeneration drag. That's pretty high, meaning the physical binders shouldn't get much use. Now, if you're talking braking performance like you have to stop right now, the brakes are very good. In case you didn't know, this car weighs almost 5,000 pounds. That's an awful lot of weight to bring to a stop. And quite a chunk to move off the line, but Taycan doesn't feel like a porker. I shouldn't have to point out quietness because EVs by their very nature are quiet, but this one, it's really quiet. Would be a great road trip car. Which brings up range. The EPA rates the Taycan 4S at 203 miles, and these days, that's not very impressive, but Here's the thing, today I'm easily going to see 260 and I'm not driving this thing easy. And I've talked to other auto riders and they've seen the same numbers. So that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about buying. After a full day of romping around, it's time to stop at an Electrify America high-speed 350 kilowatt charging station. I had no problem finding one using the onboard navigation system. The claim is an 80% charge in 22 minutes or so. Impressive. Now, as good as that is, Understand, there's a learning curve that involves basic physics that apply to all batteries. That fastest rate only happens when the battery is below 15%, and I haven't drained that much juice off. By putting the location of the charger in the Navi system, the car preconditions the battery, basically warms it up so it'll charge faster. I have an Electrify America account, but it's not user-friendly. Between charge level and the time it took to set up my camera and futz with the app, the battery cooled down, so the charge speed is slower. In this particular case, a more standard 150 kilowatt system would have worked just as quickly. And so now I just wait. Can't go shopping, Gap is closed. If there's a subway, nah. 
And because Electrify America charges by the minute, it racked up quite a bill using the 350 kilowatt stall. FYI, home rates are a fraction of the cost of gasoline. You'll probably only use these during long distance travel. Porsche does offer free charging to Taycan owners for the first three years, but after that, you're gonna wanna charge at home because this is not cheap. Learning from my first attempt, my wife and I headed to Portland, Oregon for a second stab at the network. The 185 miles to the Rose City was a cinch. After a social distance Thai lunch with my good friend and mentor Jim Newman, we drove around to find dessert, but everything was boarded up after the big demonstrations. Pushing the range, I set the Navi for a Kelso, Washington charge station. That's 250 miles total from Seattle to Portland to Kelso, much of it in the rain. Making it to the station wasn't an issue. There were 16 miles left, but three of the four high-speed chargers were out of service. The only operational 350 kilowatt stall was occupied by an e-golf. Charging etiquette meant waiting for it to finish for my test. Chevy Bolt drivers Chris and Yelena showed me the black art of using the Electrify America app. And as advertised, the Taycan soaked up power like a sponge, hitting 80% in 21 minutes. The cost was much less than my first attempt since the session was much shorter. So A plus for the Taycan, C minus for Electrify America. That's a work in progress. Okay, back to moving pictures. The cockpit is the modern interpretation of a classic Porsche layout, and in my week with the Taycan, I found the usability to be excellent. Buttons, knobs, and touch points let the driver get to everything quickly and easily without going through menus. It can all be configured exactly the way you want. An $1,100 touchscreen for the co-pilot that would go here allows them to handle stuff like navigation if your passengers are often bored. Again, love the pattern of the race text material. Heated and vented adaptive seats are supportive and grippy. They should fit a wide variety of drivers. The vibe in the cabin is excellent. This trim material cuts glare. It also looks like plastic, which isn't the visual I want in a $130,000 car. There are plenty of cubbies to store things away, just like any other vehicle. I'll ask the engineers to work on keeping this lid open. Grabbing something while driving is a hassle. Pockets are lined, things don't rattle around, and that's important since electric cars are so quiet. There's an optional smoking kit, not something I'd allow in my very expensive vehicle. The vents can't be controlled directly. It's done in the menu, and laugh if you want, it does make adjusting the ones that you can't reach easy. The user interface with excellent response is very flexible and can be customized. Voice commands with the trigger phrase, hey Porsche, work very well. I can see this being a nightmare for Ellen DeGeneres though. <laughs> you do know her wife's name, right? Apple Music can be streamed directly, no phone needed. There's CarPlay, but no Android Auto. Porsche says the vast majority of its customers are iOS users. Too bad you didn't come on the Taycan Turbo Drive on the Angeles Crest Highway. You would have loved that road. Are you kidding me? In the back seat, I would have been car sick. You gotta remember, Porsche, not about spacious back seats, unless maybe it's a Cayenne. Uh, getting in the space in the door here, a little tight for my size 11s. Once in, the space is okay, about the same size as a BMW 3 Series sedan, maybe a little bit smaller. I'd say that I have just enough headroom thigh support, uh, well, that's fine. The design of the battery pack is scooped out so that there's more foot room and that's okay, but you know, there's still some intrusion. Door pockets are on the small side, they're lined so things don't rattle around. Dang, no seat pockets? And I'm looking at a large expanse of plastic back here. Phones can be charged, but buy new USB cords. The cushions are well contoured. At this price point, I wish they were heated. There are belts for two back here, unless you order the two plus one seating package. Since the middle position is tight, I don't think I'd bother with that. 
If you haven't seen a Taycan in person, it looks like a smaller, more shapely Panamera. In fact, a number of people stopping to admire this mistook it for one. The styling is both subtle and dramatic. It draws a lot of eyeballs, more than I would have thought. And it's a lot closer to the Mission E concept vehicle than most production cars get. I really like that name too, a great reverse play on emission. One of the reasons I do the TP trunk test is that the bundles are about the same size as a carry-on suitcase, only slightly more humorous. Uh, now I am actually using real suitcases. Costco does have plenty of toilet paper on hand these days. But nothing like the real thing, right? Including the big charge cord bag and a suitcase that can only be checked, the various size bags show Tycon's trunk is not huge, kind of average in size. There are a few touches in here that make life a little easier. Uh, can't say that I've used a 12 volt power supply more than a couple times in the trunk in the last 15 years, but can't hurt. Eyeballing it, I'm pretty sure the charge cord won't fit in here. It would be close. There are no remote releases. Dropping the backs has to be done from the back seat area. One reason to buy the 2 plus 1 seating package? It adds 40-20-40 split seats. The Cross Turismo version, a wagony crossover that should arrive next year, should get a wide hatch for better utility. Oh, and that's not everything. Tycon has a frunk. It's not all that big, but hey, everything helps. Time for Red Light Green Light, my new overview. Green light. The combination of Porsche performance and electrification is more than the sum of the two. Taycan is brilliant, one of my favorite cars to drive. The sleek, understated Sinoe design is art on wheels. Rapid charging makes road trips easy. It's a game changer. Yellow lights. Uh, what's up with the EPA rated range? I easily beat it by a significant 25%. Buy a Cayenne for a Porsche with generous cargo and back seat room. The black trim on my tester and plastic seat backs lack the usual Porsche heft and look. Red light. Porsche performance and refinement mean Porsche pricing. Without the Porsche Connect app, the Electrify America network and app needs work to gain my trust. Stations are plentiful on main corridors, but some individual chargers were out of service. For those with the funds and the patience to wait for one, Porsche Taycan is a revelation. The Turbo and Turbo S models might be faster and more capable, but the less expensive 4S is all the EV needed for a wicked good time. And with its extended range, living with it is much like any car, with the added convenience of never having to go to a gas station. Sleek, swift, and sure, Taycan is a new kind of enthusiast vehicle. Sounds like the future of performance is quietly shaping up to be electrifying. There are strengths and weaknesses in competing electric cars. Tesla fans are savagely faithful. I understand that. I like the cars. I'm just not going down the comparison rabbit hole here. Some owners get pretty intense about the brand. I would like to see that energy focused on getting people to consider EVs in general, not just Tesla. Don't silo yourself off into one EV camp. Do research, test drive, buy the car that's right for you, which, hey, might be an affordable city car like the excellent Mini Cooper SE with its shorter range, or a Chevy Bolt EV like Chris and Yelena here. Happy to help, Tom. Again, thanks for the app hacks, you two. And as much as I love them, electric cars aren't for everyone. You really need to have access to level two charging at home or at your office. One thing about EA's high-speed chargers, the stalls are independent of each other. So if three Tycons are plugged in at high-speed chargers, there's no degradation on charge time. Now, considering how COVID-19 affected production, multiple Tycons charging in one place will be a rare sight for some time. All right, let's get past all the subscribe to this channel, sign up for notifications, click like, and leave a comment because it really does help the algorithm of this channel. And move on to a question that people always ask me, and that is, Tom, what car would you buy if you were buying something new today? And I gotta say, if I had the money, it would be this, the 4S. I don't really need a turbo. I don't need the Turbo S. And it would have been a Cayman, probably a GTS 4.0 before. But the reality is, now that I've experienced EVs, I don't know that I'll ever go back.
if you haven't experienced an electric car, I highly suggest that you test drive them, okay? They're terrific, especially if you have a place to charge them at home. And people always ask me, hey, why don't you do Teslas? Well, it's because Tesla won't give me a press car. They do things differently. I would have to borrow somebody's car for three or four days because it takes me a while to do a good job to shoot these. And I'm not gonna impose on anybody. Other people do Teslas. Go watch their videos, all right? Glad they made electric cars cool. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.